You're probably wondering why we need a fan this big. Huge. Well, we're building a passive solar greenhouse, and today we're gonna talk about how we're gonna go about actually storing heat for winter months. We're in the middle of a pretty cold stretch right now, and here in Alberta, we can get some pretty variable temperatures. Let's see how cold it actually is. So here's the old hot water test. Yeah, that's cold all right. Our community greenhouse needs to be able to function in the high heat of summer and also the cold of winter. Our challenge is trying to do this off grid. So in a nutshell, we have a couple of systems that are gonna be keeping this greenhouse at a relatively stable process, or at least we hope. If anything, it's gonna give us a starting point and the amount of supplemental heat that we'll need will be less overall. We have first the daily heat recovery systems, including the solar air heater and the daily heat recovery system that comes with the greenhouse itself. Then in order to give us some more long-term storage, we have this climate battery under the earth. What we have currently been working on is the design of our foundation and climate battery so we can be as efficient as possible in storing and releasing heat for those periods where we have too much or not enough. First is a daily internal heat recovery system. This will allow us to store and release excess heat on a day-to-day -day basis. Our growing dome is designed to store excess heat during the day. It does this in two ways. Number one, there's a large pond on the northern end. Because water has such a high specific heat capacity, it can store a lot of heat and then release it slowly when needed. The second design aspect in our growing dome is a system that uses the grow beds as daily heat banks. Once built, there will be corrugated pipe running through the bottoms of the grow beds. The ends are attached to a solar fan that when in operation will move warm air through the grow beds, storing that heat for when it may be needed in the evenings. Now our winters can get pretty cold, so we have also purchased a solar air panel. The idea is that as we get closer to the evening, the sun will hit the solar air panel and give us some supplemental heat that can be stored and then released throughout the colder evenings. The way that a solar air panel works is it takes the cooler air from inside the greenhouse, uses the sun's energy and the sun's heat in order to heat it up, and then moves it back into the greenhouse a couple of degrees warmer. We went with a company called Arctica Solar uh, based out of California, and they've designed things like this that have worked all the way from Antarctica in the south to Greenland in the north. Now these systems will allow us to operate more efficiently from one day to the next. In order to be more successful in the winter months, we need to be more intentional about heat storage in the long term and need a larger thermal mass outside of the grow beds. Climate batteries go by a couple of names, another being a ground air heat transfer system or GAT. A climate battery uses the thermal mass below the growing dome to store energy. Because there is more thermal mass, we have a larger storage capacity. The climate battery consists of a couple of different parts. We have this larger diameter pipe which acts as a manifold on the east and west side of the greenhouse. A large portion of this pipe is buried horizontally, however we'll have an elbow installed at one end and then a vertical portion rising out of the earth. Between these two manifolds we're running 25 foot sections of 4 inch perforated weeping tile. Students used a free online tool to calculate the size of the fan and the amount of material we'll need. We made some assumptions in regards to the volume of our growing dome. But by assuming we basically had half a sphere on a four foot cylinder, the volume calculation was pretty easy. We then went about finding the materials we need. Students were able to get a couple of 25 foot sections of weeping tile from local builders and our county donated all of the 12 inch pipe we need for the manifold. Finding fittings was a little more difficult. Oh, oh. So we thought we'd be paying a lot for these. However, a local irrigation supply company had something that will work and because they're irrigation fittings, they were way cheaper than what we thought we would be paying. This is one of our 90s and uh, this is one of our end caps. The climate battery calculator also allowed us to calculate the size of the fan we need to operate our climate battery. In order to get best results, you wanna turn over all the air in the space at least five times an hour. That required us to hit 750 CFMs with our fan. We went a bit higher with this fan right here 
However, we also have a speed controller here uh, that came with it. So this gives us a bit of flexibility and the opportunity to experiment a bit with the number of air changes per hour in that space. The power of the climate battery is twofold. One, it allows us to use the thermal mass below our growing dome as energy storage. And two, it taps into the energy involved in the condensation and vaporization of water. The phase change of water is a physical process, but we can express it like this. The energy involved in this phase change is where the climate battery improves efficiency year round. In the hot summer months, the warm air is moved into the climate battery. The energy can be stored in the cooler earth, but we also get this evaporative cooling as evaporation occurs in the system. You can see with this alcohol burner how evaporation is endothermic and leads to cooling of its surroundings. A climate battery allows us to do this on a larger scale and leads to a net cooling of the growing dome. In the colder months, the opposite process can give us a heating effect. Heat will naturally rise into the greenhouse, but we can also get this heating effect as condensation occurs and releases energy in this exothermic process. So one thing we're doing with our foundation is we're going with ICF blocks. These are going to be stacked to a depth of four feet and buried below the actual greenhouse itself. There's going to be eight inches of concrete poured between them. And if you think about the insulating value that we get here, we have this eight inches of concrete, which is pretty high insulation value, especially buried in the earth as it is. But we also get the added benefit of this two inch of styrofoam on either side. Now these blocks just stack on top of each other, just like Lego. Uh, but one of the difficulties that we're going to have is that our greenhouse doesn't come at 45 and 90 degree angles. We're going to have to custom cut these blocks in order to get the fit that we want. In the warmer summer, we may reach a limit where we can't store any more energy in the earth and we lose that cooling effect. The reason we have still chosen to do this route is we have other ways to cool the growing dome if we run up against this, uh, including ventilation and running misters to give us that evaporative cooling effect somewhere else. So that's where we're at and we're looking forward to actually documenting the actual construction of this space. Make sure you hit subscribe down there so you can learn along with us. If you're looking for some resources in regards to climate batteries, we recommend checking out Verge Permaculture um, and also some designs in this book called Chinese Greenhouses uh, by Dan Chiris. Chiris. Uh, but it was a good book and it also involved a lot of information about some daily heat recovery systems. You should also check out this link here of a passive solar greenhouse just down the road from us in Olds where they are using a lot of these heat recovery systems in order to allow them to grow throughout the winter passively. Hey, thanks for checking in with Awkward Aquaponics. Awkward.